Yo, 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 welcome everybody. Good evening everyone, welcome back to TCR Trinity. Competitive racing. Well, TCR TJ is the Season 13 Golden Class Champion for Trinity Competitive Racing. Oh, let's go, dude! Yes! Jabbar on the podium! He's on it by a tenth! Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, not... side by side through one. And side, oh, and see freeze gets a little half spin. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Wheel bumping. DRS Naval, let's do it. And Captain Blade battling it out for position. Captain Blade. Echo, what the f? The McChicken goes around and he also makes a yeah, rewind down the front straight. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta check the heart rate. Why do we do this? Because of nights like this. Yo yo, welcome everybody to TCR, Trinity Competitive Racing, and welcome to episode 29 of the Racing Debrief, TCR's podcast, where we combine the world of e-racing, sim racing, and TCR with real-life motorsports and Formula One, a true racing enthusiast to listen. I'm your host, C. Freeze, alongside me, Mr. Camden Luca, and we are here recording on August 7th. 2023. Let's get into it. We're going to review round one of TCR. TCR's back. Season 16. We had all three races last week. And, uh, yeah, we're here to talk about it. A lot happened. A pretty successful week, I thought. And, um, yeah, we're fully back in the swing of things. So, uh, welcome, Camden. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be back. And, we're starting to be really consistent with the podcasting. Uh, really, we got to come up with stuff to talk about here for the next few weeks because F1 is in their summer break and all we got is TCR. So I guess it's a good time to talk about TCR. Yeah, I mean, if you can, if you call being consistent with the podcast maybe getting two uploads in a row, <laughs> then I'll take it. <laughs> it's a streak. If we could keep the streak alive, let's see how many in a row we can get, all right? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Well, uh, if anyone's new um, to the podcast listening, welcome. Uh, be sure to uh, check us out as we have our races. This will probably be uploaded Tuesday morning, so that means we have Silver Class today and uh, Golden Class tomorrow. Thursday is on the Platinum Class, and we're actually going to talk about the Silver Class first. Um, from last week, Silver Class, they, uh, you know, they started their, their season first class with uh, the first race. Obviously, they kicked the week off. And I had the privilege to commentate and uh, alongside D'Angelo, who was half asleep uh, for the <laughs> <laughs> majority of the commentary. Uh, he was quite quiet. Uh, he uh, said that he just woke up from a nap, so I basically did a solo commentary last week, but <laughs> hopefully uh, he'll be up with some coffee, uh, coffee, and uh, he'll be up uh, alongside me for round number two. <laughs> hey, if he ever falls asleep mid-broadcast, just call me up, Seafreeze, and yeah, I, I can true. take over and uh, kick him back onto the couch. You are available on Tuesdays now, you know, as, as you get promoted. And we'll get to that. I am, yeah. I'm we'll not doing to... anything TCR-related on Tuesdays anymore. <laughs> we'll get to your uh, promotion and performance in, in a little bit. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, but, yeah, you know what? I, <clears throat> I was um, pretty excited to start the season, you know, because I wanted to see where everybody was. And I thought all the new drivers uh, put on a great performance and uh, really solidified themselves into the class and silver class is unique because there's always a little bit more field spread based off of the leader to the I guess the person last or more towards the rear drivers just because it's all assist based so you're gonna have some quick drivers in silver class but the reason they're in silver is because they have assists so or they're even newer, more inexperienced drivers, which, you know, maybe they have only a few races under their belt in league racing experience. So you're going to have some bigger gaps in silver than you might have in platinum or golden. Um, 
and then it's up to them to perform, get some experience, maybe trial some of the assists off, and that's when they eventually get to golden. And then golden and platinum will split the, the you know the speed drivers from you know the top twenty and then and then the bottom twenty. But um, so you know having some new drivers come into the class and then eventually or, or right out of the gate start at the front of the pack is not out of the ordinary. Um, so to have four drivers last week. Um, finish in the top four and basically their debuts um, wasn't out of the ordinary but now it kind of solidifies them in that position uh, so you know Bulldog Bazaar won the race um, in a weird way he wasn't it wasn't looking like he was going to win it I think it was going to be Z-Man Nars uh, but he ran out of fuel, and I don't know if he said he got a puncture, but I think it was m mainly the fuel, if anything. Uh, he ran out of fuel, he underfueled the car, or maybe he just didn't save enough because the whole race was green, and, you know, he was the only one really up there with no penalty, and Bulldog had nine seconds, and all Z-Man had to do was finish the line, uh, but he ran out of fuel, so I don't know if that's something he wasn't aware of, or maybe it was, and he just couldn't save enough, and it just... He, you know, wasn't able to get it in, um, but he didn't finish on the podium. But uh, still, you know, good speed out of him. Uh, so Bulldog got the win, and he was surprised to get it. I was surprised on the commentary to get it. Um, so it was it was an interesting ending um, because usually when you have time penalties that influence the you know the position of the race, it usually goes one way or the other, and um, you know, it's usually not close, but uh, in that scenario, you know, we had a nice finish all the way down to the end, um, and, and at this time, it was at the expense of Z-Man Nars, who, uh, he, <laughs> it was funny, he was posting in group chat, and, you know, the the YouTube stream was suggesting him, and the YouTube kept trying to, to scar him, and... <laughs> 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 scar him of his uh, round one opening, which he shouldn't be ashamed of. I mean, it was a great performance. He just ran out of fuel. Um, so I don't know if he underfueled or maybe he was maybe just around even and he just used a, up a lot and he didn't notice or whatever the case may be. But uh, if he doesn't run out of fuel, he wins the race and it's a good performance. But, you know, uh, unlucky for him. To not even get a podium, but luckily for Zionical, who's also a new um, driver, was able to get up onto the podium due to that. He finished third, and uh, your younger brother Kluka or Colby uh, finished second. So he uh, is following in your footsteps. So overall, those four drivers put on a great opening round, and um, yeah. You know, it was just, it was really cool for for new faces to be in the class, you know? I got tired of you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it was a very entertaining first round. Uh, there were four to five people always up in that lead pack going for the lead. And even behind those four that we mentioned, uh, you had a good battle with Chabar and F1 Nerd uh, before fuel issues plagued F1 Nerd's race, and he actually didn't get any points at all, so... Uh, F1 nerd not off to a great start, but he had solid pace, and uh, a big Toblerone, he ended up sixth, but uh, his pace early on was encouraging. Uh, really quick, I think his pace has improved from last season, he just has to work on not spinning out as much. Uh, that was his Achilles heel once again this week, was just him making a mistake, and he ended up finishing in the midfield, but yeah, I mean... If after round one, you really shouldn't have a clear picture as to who the championship favorite is going to be, but I would say after Golden Class, uh, we have a pretty good idea that KD is probably going to be either the favorite or one of the favorites to win the championship. And even up in Platinum, I mean, you had uh, B. Tom up there, uh, Confessor was quick until he had his issues. Silver Class, though? You really like you could have four or five people that we're still talking about as being a favorite. Uh, mm -hmm. Pilot Pants, he didn't even get the race. Yeah, I was gonna say because he got disqualified off the line because of a formation lap glitch, which I heard was fixed for this week. So hopefully he doesn't 
run into that trouble, I believe. Yeah, well, actually, for him, it wasn't a formation lap uh, issue. It, w it was... For him, it was because he disconnected during qualifying, and when by the time he got back into the session, he joined during he joined too late, basically. So he couldn't get control of his car in in time for him to start the race, and that's the same thing that happened to me last season. I I, I don't remember what race. Um, it was towards the middle or end of last season. Uh, I got disconnected during qualifying, and then I joined back, and I joined between qualifying and the formation lap loading screen, and when the formation lap started, I didn't have control of my car, so when the race starts, you just get disqualified. So that's what happened to him, because uh, I was in, it was interested to, I was curious to see what happened, and uh, that, that happened to me last year. I was... Um, I stopped trying from there on. I went out and got food and watched the rest of the platinum class while e eating a <laughs> burrito. So <laughs> I was quite done with it. Um, and it was unfortunate for him because uh, he didn't really get a chance to start the race um, in silver class. Although he did reserve in golden. I don't remember where he finished, but he said he wanted to... He finished 15th or so. So I don't know how, you know... For a silver driver going up there, um, he just said he wanted to use some of the practice and not have it totally wasted. So um, he was reserving in Golden, but we should see him back on the grid for this for this round. Although the one driver that it did affect was we are checking, um, which uh, with a formation lap glitch, which it is fixed. But unfortunately, we weren't able to really restart the race because it only happened to like one person um, and we really w I wasn't aware of the glitch so that's kind of you know m my bad and and I guess no one really unless you did league races or played the game or watched other leagues you would know that that I guess was a glitch but um, yeah it was unfortunate for him I mean it, Although on the other side of things, if he parked correctly, he would have raced. So, <laughs> um, but if that let's say happened to let's say five people, four or five people, you know, that would be a pretty significant, you know, cause to restart the race. But uh, it really only happened to one pilot rejoined late. And uh, you know, when we do these races, you know, and that that's another theme we'll talk about later on in platinum is, you know, we kind of have to keep the ball rolling because. You know, you can easily restart for one driver, but then what happens if it happens again on the restart and it happens again on the next one, the one driver, one driver. So when there's only three or less, really, there's only so much you could do. It's it's basically, you, you know, you, you do what the cards are dealt and then you just kind of move on. So it's unfortunate it happens all the time, and especially online and league racing and, and stuff like that. But um, they did fix it. We'll be running the formation lap. Um, because I think the commentators need that extra lap to get settled. <laughs> I know I do. I hate going right into the race commentating uh, with n not all my settings up, and uh, I like the formation lap to just kind of get a nice like pre-race going. You know, get the pre-race yeah. hype, the predictions in. You know, hype up. It, the it got me at Platinum. I was down looking at the chat. And I look up, and they were in turn one. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hopefully... Well, good good thing we have that back, and, you know, it just came right in time. Um, so it only affected one one uh, one driver. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I wanted to go back to what you were saying with Toblerone. It was a promising first round for him. He had about 12 laps of good running, good, good pace, good speed, and he recovered to a, a nice P6 at the end of it, um, which I thought was a decent opening round for him. Uh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, because it was a new track, and it was the first league race in the season, so um, you, know, you take that combination, new game, new season, you know, new car for him, new track, new teammate, a lot, of, lots of new um, you know, you give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, I think when he goes to Bahrain this week, uh, you hope to see him put a nice race together uh, just to get another top five. Um, but back to the the top four that finished, it was Bulldog, Kluka, Zionical, and Z-Man. 
um, specifically to the top three, I was asking drivers, you know, I was asking them their their goals for the season. What are they expecting? Because you know, they obviously don't know where they're going to set in the season because uh, they never raced in that class before and then once they do one race you know maybe their expectations will change and a lot of them still stuck with the same um, goal that they kinda had which was just to score some points um, but I think I think they're gonna be overly surprised that I think those four are gonna be c c competing for the championship so I think I think it's uh it's kind of a wake-up call in a good way for all those drivers because they had low expectations coming in. Oh, maybe I'll just score some points, have some good runs, you know, first season here. But I think any of those four can go out and, you know, if they show up consistently and they can have some good performances, I think they're going to be in the, in the, you know, in the conversation for a championship. So I think that was kind of cool to see them having low expectations and then coming in, uh, you know, on the podium and having some really good speed as well so uh, all good things to consider you know looking forward for those four drivers um, who else was new to the to the grid we had um, a whiz bang got his first points he had a solid top 10 um, everyone else was returning drivers from last week um, and obviously pilot uh, wasn't able to get any uh, running time due to the, the disqualification um, but also um, you know we have some new sign-ups as well for this week so we'll have some new drivers we uh, we still are yet to see the two drivers in the Mercedes which is Kyle Fan and Peaky Blinder we have a new driver of CH Machine and the Haas this week. We'll maybe see him. And the two Alfa Romeo drivers of Saad Niaz, if I'm pronouncing it correct, and Daniel Morris. Uh, so they could be also making their debuts. And we, at the current time, we have one seat at Haas. So you can still sign up and get on the grid. Um, but it could also be one of those drivers that shows up one race later and contends for the championship you know as I was saying last week you know the the champion might not be on the on the present grid it could be somebody who comes in just a little bit later so you know I think we'll see at a more traditional circuit of Bahrain one that is uh, pretty I'd say a little bit easier uh, you know easier overtaking I think a lot of you'll have you know more packs of drivers together because the long straights DRS and it's a track that a lot of drivers know and uh, do pretty well at so I think the competition will be closer in all classes because uh, I thought Qatar was a little bit I don't know if you felt it but it felt um, you either had it or you didn't have it like if you nailed the setup and you nailed your practice you did great and then those drivers were up front but if you had something wrong you were losing time throughout the entire lap and it was really hard to stick with the other driver in front if you had too much downforce or um, if you didn't have enough downforce you wouldn't be able to go through the corners so I felt like if 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 people nailed the setup they did good at Qatar um, but it was very setup dependent and for a first round it almost reminded me of Australia when they used to go in real F1 to Australia because Australia it was never like a traditional circuit you know now they really start at Bahrain which you get a little bit more representative of the grid but you know I remember when they used to go to Australia all the time for F1 as the opening round that it was like oh it was kind of almost a wild card race it's like all right let's just throw it out there see what happens and then but you really can't get a full picture of the grid until a f couple rounds in you know until they go to Bahrain and some of these other tracks so uh, I felt like that's kinda how it felt for me um, I don't know if that felt for you yeah uh, oh definitely I, I mean there was just so much that could have gone wrong I mean you mentioned the setup and if you miss the setup you're gonna fall behind but uh, the fuel was a big problem for silver and golden, and if we didn't have that late safety car in the platinum class race, I guarantee you there probably would have been somebody that was short on fuel. Um, there was just a lot of obstacles, and it's the first race of not only a new season, but also a new game, so really everybody's kind of learning. Um, 
especially for somebody like me who uh, was running their first race on a completely new uh, new format for me on a new wheel. Um, so you had to not make mistakes, and we saw it throughout all three classes. There were people that uh, either got into incidents or uh, spun out under safety car. Like there was just a lot of things that went wrong for people. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm um, going back. I just wanted to mention some of the drivers, um, returning drivers that you know did have a, a pretty good race last week was Chabar finished fifth um, and he was the first driver of returning drivers and I thought he had a pretty solid day um, like I said there was a pretty big gap between the top four and uh, pretty much everyone else kind of it just was a long green race so due to the characteristics of the track you had a lot of gaps um, but if you're able to finish a top five, and I saw a top five, I thought that was pretty good to start the season. Uh, Easy Ten had a good one as well um, because you know he had a few races last season, and it seemed like he was just off from getting points. And uh, for him to get seventh, I think is his best finish so far in a few starts. So I thought he had a nice one as well, he picked up six points. Um, Halberg uh, finished eighth. He did get some points. Uh, I felt like he kind of struggled to where he usually might have been. I, th I feel like he could be a little farther up, um, but he could have just missed on the, on at Qatar, you know, with the setup and, and whatnot. Uh, Oreo finishing uh, 10th, so he was able to finish and get double points for Aston Martin. Um, so yeah, all in all, pretty good. And like you said, F1 nerd we ran out of fuel, um, but uh, he's a guy who we have high expectations for. And uh, he didn't score any points last week, um, but I think I think he was quick at Bahrain last season. Um, so you know, look out for him. Look out for some of the newer drivers that just signed up. Um, and yeah, we'll have another round of Bahrain uh, Tuesday, which should be today when this is uploaded, 8:45 p.m. Eastern Time, so come tune in, uh, give the video some likes so the algorithm does its thing and be much appreciated. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there was anything else I had on Silver. I don't know. Any final thoughts on Silver? I don't think so. I think the one thing to look for uh, tomorrow or today, if you're watching it, um, it we're going to get a good picture as to how clean these guys are. Because they race really well at that was Qatar. The thing. They had a really clean, though, really clean yep, first round. No incident. But Bahrain will test them, though. Uh, there's a lot <laughs> more room for error, especially lap one, turn one. Uh, we've seen chaos in this class specifically at this track in the past going down in the turn one. Oh, yeah, you got taken out a few times. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the silver class. Good job, guys, and um, yeah, good luck for round two. Uh, we'll go on to uh, the silver. Cl uh, oh, man, we just did that. Golden class. The golden class. You need your coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just had one though. It might need another. Um, the golden class. Um, just to just to uh, give them their flowers. I thought. Uh, just before we start with the drivers, uh, I wanted to just make some comments on the commentary. And uh, this one I did actually watch live, um, and ha I had it on. I had the Golden Class on because I wanted to see how the commentary was. And uh, for the first commentary in TCR was Logan LSTV, uh, who he's done commentaries before in other leagues on iRacing and F1 and such, NASCAR and all that. Uh, good stuff. Uh, he did a nice flawless broadcast, I thought, um, with the uh, you know first time in the Golden Class in TCR. I thought he did it quite well. Uh, he'll be back again uh, for this week, and uh, first time as well commentating ever was the disqualified driver from the formation lap of We Are Checking. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought he did a great job. I thought he had a commentator's voice. Like, I heard him. I was like, oh, all right, let's listen. He knows what he's talking about because he's got the commentator voice. You know, you can easily have, you know, you can easily say the right things and, and, and do what you have to do. But you need the voice. And he had the voice. Like, he sounded professional. And, you know, I was like, oh. Oh shit! Let me listen to this guy. He's got like he knows what he's talking about, <laughs> and it's the voice. And I thought them too. 
you know, had for the first time, you know, first round, first time together, they probably first time to talk to each other uh, ever. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good commentary, so I think they're going to be in the booth again this week, and um, I'm excited. I think uh, those two could uh, really help us out on, uh, especially Wednesdays, which last season I know we've been struggling with commentators, so... Um, yeah, good stuff by them. I thought they did a good job, uh, you know, covering the broadcast. Let let me know, everyone who's listening, if if you thought the same or not. You know, give us your opinions. Um, we're always welcome. We do to look at the comments. We, trust me, we do look at the comments. So don't be afraid to speak your mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, the uh, the golden class. Um, I think this one out of all three of the classes, this one, this race was kind of um, a sleeper out in front um, because KD 1997 absolutely, um, you know, had it in the bag. Um, but I think, you know, he had a great performance, first win, obviously first race in TCR. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to be a competitor, and I had him one circled, um, you know, all throughout this. Uh, throughout this season I, th I think he's going to be quite quite good um, but uh, I think others maybe just missed on the setup or had some issues uh, which kind of uh, stopped them from being up competing with KD um, I don't think it was just necessarily him dominating and everyone else that was their best if, if that makes sense I feel like others like uh, GTR kind of got hit with JMB I believe uh, and then that kind of took JMB out as well um, and others probably had some issues throughout the race um, either penalties or you know just issues altogether or setup issues um, that kind of just took them off a little bit uh, throughout that one also went fully green I believe no. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Went fully green. So you're gonna have those big, big gaps there. Um, but I thought he had a great first round, and and like I said, I think this this second round at Bahrain will will give a bigger picture, um, t as to uh, you know who will will do pretty good. But one person that really surprised me was Remsley, who finished P two. Um, he was one of you know GTR's teammates and one driver that you know he brought into the league as he uh, you know started racing with him and I didn't really know where he would sit I, I I had the opportunity to race a few five lappers before the season and I was telling GT I said oh I like this guy <laughs> his race craft was good his speed looked good I said oh I like this guy he's gonna do good and uh, he had a nice p2 in his first round I thought um, you know was a positive because you know we didn't really know what we could get out of him because he's not you know we have no track record of him but for him to get a podium off the bat you know is promising uh for him to be kind of a contender all throughout the season and then see rizzy um kind of doing what he did last season picking some podiums up running up front um you know was really good for him so he finished on the podium um, so good rounds uh, from all those three drivers um, then we get to uh, the, the Haas guys <laughs> mm -hmm. us Haas guys man oh man uh, not gonna lie Camden I thought I thought uh, to start the night it was a little embarrassing seeing you qualify last <laughs> Especially when you have J and B uh, up there qualifying. I think he. I don't know. Was he second or fourth? He was up there. He was. He was fast. He yeah, was, he was pretty quick. I don't remember where he finished in qualifying, but he was definitely up front, and um, he was quick. Carson was quick as well. Even Capitan was ahead of you, so I was like, "Oh, come on, Camden!" Uh, but uh, you actually had a decent race to finish tenth um, in the first race and on the wheel and in the Golden Class, really in that scenario. So uh, you were able to kind of, you know, put something together and uh, even beat Carson, who I don't know if he had problems or what, but he finished eleventh. So uh, you were able to beat beat him and. Um, you were only one position behind Capitan, who obviously pr got promoted with you, and uh, JMB finished sixth, um, a little higher up. Although I don't know, 
if uh, the steward decision still haven't been uploaded so we'll see how that goes if that changes anything but yeah I thought you uh, you hustled your way back to get in the points so I thought you learned a lot in, ra in one oh yeah yeah I, I think I was learning throughout the race actually um, one of the things I was lacking compared to everybody else was my braking which is the toughest thing I've had to adjust with is going from using the brakes on a controller to where there's really not much weight to the uh, L1 button versus going on a wheel to where the brake pedal is actually heavy and not only am I adjusting to that but I'm also taking off ABS so it's it was really uh, starting out on the wheel that was just the hardest part and I'm still learning um, just learning how to brake and um, I, you know, I got rear-ended a couple of times during the race just because I was obviously braking earlier than most other people, and I think as the race went on, I got used to it, but I want to go back to qualifying real quick. Um, I'm not going to make an excuse, but I, I kind of am, okay? So, the first five minutes... Well, you're not a racing driver if you don't make an excuse. <laughs> we won't right. make ex excuses. Okay, so, so here's, here's the week. first part of the excuse, okay? For some reason, the YouTube was not working, okay? Because I was in charge of getting the air cast up to, you know, start the broadcast. And for some reason, the YouTube part of it was not loading. I don't know why. Maybe God was, you know, saying, Oh, we're going to throw the first obstacle at your season, Camden. This is the first thing we're going to throw at you. So I spent the first five minutes trying to get that up. But then obviously, when you spend five minutes not on track, that takes away one qualifying lap that you have. So then I get on track and I put in my banker lap, okay, which was pretty bad. <laughs> not gonna lie, it was pretty bad. Um, not that I made mistakes, I was just slow. And then, of course, um, after that, there was only a few minutes left in qualifying, so then I go back out on track and I invalidate. So I only had one lap in qualifying, and it just happened to be half a second behind second to last, and yeah, it, it was discouraging. Um, even though I didn't get much time in qualifying, it was still a pretty bad lap, and I remember just sitting there being like, man, I, <laughs> I gotta get quicker than this, because uh, I might have to go back and uh, go for a second straight Silver's Championship if this keeps it up, but, um, yeah, I mean, my race was okay. Uh, the only reason I got points, C-Freeze, is because a bunch of people ran out of gas. Yeah. That's the only reason. I passed Rafa Hulk, uh, Ben Swerven, and uh, Carson and I actually had a good fight towards the end. Um, I think his pace and I were pretty similar, which was encouraging. You know, somebody that also got promoted from Silver Class last season is kind of in the same territory as me, which, which is encouraging. Um, but he finished on track ahead of me. Uh, the only reason I got by him is because of penalties, and uh, it wasn't until the final lap to where he got a second penalty, and that was when I was like, man, I need to focus, because I was hovering around three seconds behind him, so I'm like, okay, I gotta focus in this final lap, which was hard, because I was passing people left and right who were running out of gas, so... Um, Moving chicanes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so... <laughs> I... I remember once the race ended and I saw myself go up at 10th, I told Raikkonen, who I was in a voice chat with at the time, I told him, man, I don't think I've ever been happier to get a single point yeah. in a race. Um, and I will say this, Seafreeze, I went back and looked at my Silver Class statistics, okay? My first ever race in the Silver Class, I finished 12th. So, hey, if I'm starting off my first season finishing 10th, I'm already doing better than Silver Class. <laughs> if you, you think of it that way. Well, you moved up as well. I mean, you started towards the the rear, and, and it was a green race, too, so that's where it affected you the most, and anyone who would start, you know, towards the back, if uh, there's no safety cars or anything to really, you know, help you get caught back up to the leaders, you know, you're going to only limit yourself to a certain position, so... Um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I was pretty good um, to get into the points um, with uh, a fully green race. You know, if you had if the safety car was there, you you know you would close up because um, you know by a certain lap you're already x amount of you know time behind the, the leaders who were you know in clean air already and 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 on their way. Um, so you know 
that that's pretty good, you know, for for a clean race. And that was also another surprising thing. Uh, I guess the track has a lot to do with it because the barriers are kind of far away from from this track. Um, but zero safety cars really, besides Platinum had one uh, towards the end, I think. They, yeah, they had one at the end. Um, and that was messy, and we'll get to that in a minute. But, <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Well, th those are the good races, you know. I always said it. It's, it's always fun winning, but it's also f almost funner if you can have an exciting race, finish, and be happy with like tenth or just scoring points because that means you're on a nice competitive grid and uh, th that's when you're learning the most that's when you're having the most fun actually is is when you're um, kinda starting from behind because you only get quicker when you're racing quicker drivers than you so you're not gonna yeah. learn anything if you're out in front winning by 20 seconds and you know you're on a, a pretty you know lackluster grid you know you're only gonna learn when you have quicker drivers than you and you are finding success you know and happy with your day when you're just scoring 10th or 9th or even 11th and you're like oh I was so close to getting points those are the days where you know it really does mean more so yeah I think uh, if you look at the big picture that's exactly what you want for a first round yeah I agree and you know it is going to be kind of an adjustment for me because the last four seasons in silver class my goal has been to win races and go for a championship but really my goal is kind of what you just said to get points every race and to kind of just help out Raikkonen and Haas and just be a contributor you know I don't want to be finishing 13th every week and just being on the track you know I at least want to do something and get like 8th or ninth and um, you know, I have done some laps for Bahrain, and I think I actually feel better about this week than I did last week. Um, not just from an experience standpoint and having more laps than I did last week on the game, but I just feel better about the track, honestly. So, who knows? Maybe we'll finish ninth this week, C Freeze, instead of 10th. So. I like that. And maybe I won't qualify in last. Um, I feel like I should... We should... Should we make a bet, C Freeze? Um, oh, <laughs> What's in it if for I, me? <laughs> if I qualify in the top ten at Bahrain, oh, I don't know what. Uh, ooh, I got one. Oh, since go. I never do this, if I qualify top ten at Bahrain this week, I have to drink a cup of coffee. That doesn't. Oh no! Sound how about like how about the opposite? That because doesn't sound no, like hold punishment. on. Because, well, maybe for me, because I don't drink coffee. How about it's the opposite? Because I want to qualify in the top ten, right? right? If I don't qualify in the top ten, I have to drink a cup of coffee, okay? Okay. Does that sound good? Oh, if you do Because don't. But, oh, yeah, for, yeah. for people that aren't aware, I haven't drank coffee in over a year. Seafree's over here is hooked on it. Well, coffee is his equivalent it. of crack. <laughs> I mean... I'm not addicted, I just, you know... You just have ten cups a day. You know? <laughs> I don't have ten cups a day. I have maybe two cups, one in the one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and if I do a broadcast, I have one before then. Because I have to be... Or, con like, today I had three because I was doing the podcast, but if not, then I have two. I don't think that's... Right, you know, and, it, and if you go a day without it, you start, you know hyperventilating and you start you know you start getting the shakes maybe a little bit i mean i'm not gonna deny it <laughs> <laughs> at least i'm not out here like professional i know he has a nice setup uh, you know i'm kind of jealous to be honest um uh, well with his, uh, he, he listens to and, his but at least, but at least i don't while he races yeah well at least i don't drink green mountain coffee like silent or you know we had a whole coffee discussion in the group chat la uh, the other day and i thought that was uh, pretty fun. <laughs> I saw that. Hey, speaking of and, coffee, and we have coffee mugs at uh, at the TCR shop. You can get yours. yours. Uh, the link is in the description. Uh, we have some merch, but you could also get a TCR uh, coffee mug, which I do have and I do use. So go get yours today. That was the ad read for, for, for the podcast. Now we're back. <laughs> there we go. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um... I don't know where we were going or where we're at, but I just wanted to say, um, you know who 
I thought had a pretty um, disappointing first round in Golden. Raiden? Raiden, Raiden. Shogun? Raiden. Yep. <laughs> and not only him, but his teammate of Rafa Hulk, too, who what didn't score points. Um, you know, Raiden coming in here is finished third last season. He's the, the top guy as far as people returning uh, drivers. Um, and uh, he didn't get any points. I don't know. I didn't follow his entire race. I just know... I, I don't really know what happened much. I know he didn't qualify up at the front. Uh, I don't think he got taken out. I don't know if it was just an off day or, or what the issue was. But both Mercedes uh, had no points um, as a team. And, and they were kind of one of those teams we kind of picked that could be competing for the constructors and uh, you know they're they're quite behind now because most of the other teams um, like the Alpha Tauri's of Remsley and GT both scored points and McLaren's um, did pretty well I think let me look here oops I got an ad I know Seeger's got points I don't know where Ben finished Ben finished 13th ah right and um Williams obviously did go with KD. Carson wasn't able to get any points. Rizzi um, didn't show. No, Rizzi got the podium, but F and D didn't show. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty split so far. Um, but uh, the team leading the constructors, Alpine, after one round, is a team that both scored points. So I think that's the the thing to kind of to look at is. The constructors is uh, you know those who are going to score both you know for both the drivers so at uh, GT and Remsley did just that so um, yeah I don't know anything else to kind of look at from Golden what um um I think a couple things to point out and it's mostly because of constructors but uh, you mentioned how FND didn't show up uh, once he races. Alfa Romeo will be up there mm. because we saw what they did last season. Uh, they weren't really winning many races, and with KD's pace and even GTR's pace, I don't know how many races they're going to win, but uh, they're going to be up there getting podiums just about every race, and I think that's all that they need um, is just for both of them to be up there, and they'll be up there. But um, the one, the, the only thing that was questioning Alpine for me was Remsley's pace. That was what we had questions about, because yeah. obviously we knew that GT was going to be one of the favorites, and if, if he had a teammate that had his pace, then Alpine would obviously win the Constructors. But Oh, Alpine. I, I said Alpha Tauri earlier. Yeah, you I kind of let that slide. You know what? That, <laughs> I heard that. That makes... Uh, I'm going to mess that up all season, because I see on the podium a nice big A, and it looks like the Alpha Tauri uh, font... And I'm looking, and, and that's Alpine. Where the hell is AlphaTauri? They're not even on the grid. Who is in the AlphaTauri? Nobody. It, well, nobody. No, we just got we just got somebody. Uh, Sarah just joined back. Oh, in Sarah, Sarah. And he's gonna be. Yep, he will be season thirteen. Sarah, Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> he was my season thirteen <laughs> teammate. A fun fact uh, in the silver class. Yeah. He yeah he was silver driver he just signed up he I I, uh, I don't think he's gonna be here this week he said he uh, declined um, but um, yeah we put him in the golden class because he uh, he has experience in um, in league racing and he only runs racing line only so uh, he's quite familiar with uh, yourself he's familiar with Rafa Rockstar um, and I think uh, maybe Seagrist and Ben and a lot of those silver drivers of that kind of era uh, you know kind of moved up and now he would be in the golden class so he needs a teammate so go sign up you can uh, sign up now we have one spot uh, open in the golden class at Alpha Tari. that's right and just to finish up my point um, if Ramsey shows the pace that he showed last week Alpine's gonna win the constructors um, I had Mercedes winning it and oof. That might be a commentator's curse on my part because, um, you know, maybe it was a bad week for Raiden, but boy, yeah, Mercedes, they, they were both, I mean, Rafa was a little quicker than me, but Raiden was back there with me, and Rafa, before he ran out of fuel, he was at the back end of the top 10, so, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with Alpine after week one. Yeah. Um, good. Good, uh, good stuff, Golden Class. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys do at Bahrain. Um, but it was cool to see this grid. And a nice mixture of, uh, of talent here. And um, I was noticing earlier, 
there's quite a few drivers on either PC or Xbox. I think I was counting at last race we had one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people from a uh, different platform out of 16, so half the grid uh, from last week was on a different platform. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, I think the crossplay, now that it's our third season that we have it on, I think we're starting to see more and more drivers from different platforms as we get, um, you know, more and more recruits from either Xbox, but mainly PC. Um, so it's cool to see I mean, drivers from different platforms uh, come on and. Uh, compete on the grid so that's the golden class wednesdays 8 45 p.m eastern time and we'll see uh what they do round two by rain um one thing before we get into platinum i want to just kind of briefly mention this because it was something that i'm going to be pushing a lot in this season so hopefully uh it's not a it's kind of a rant i have another rant for platinum class but um I have kind of a mini rant, but a positive rant, uh, which is um, the streams um, and uh, the support from every all the drivers and uh, viewers or uh, people in TCR, dri you know, people listening to this. You know, I think the point uh, about our streams is, um, you know, if, if they do really well uh, viewing wise, uh, especially the likes and the comments, um, if you know we obviously as drivers or as you know owner and officials and admins and the moderator team and, and whatnot we do a lot of the work you know for the league and you know mainly the drivers we don't really ask much of the drivers other than to really show up be respectful do the basic things show up and race basically I mean uh, that's the main thing because we don't have a league without drivers racing in it um, but the other thing that uh, we can really as a league do great at is if the drivers then take it another step and also support the streams that they race on right I mean I think it's kind of for me a win-win for everyone if drivers in the league um, support each other's classes you know we have a lot of platinum drivers look at the silver races and golden races and uh, we have a lot of drivers trying to get intel for their races and and if we can all support each other in the classes and in after the races and and start to say you know good race good race blah 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 you know they practice together you know that's really positive you know in the league community and also in TCR for things to go well so if you're a driver that races in the league you know why wouldn't you want to go to the the stream you know afterwards you know obviously if you race and you or some watch it live too um or go to the other classes and you head over and give it a like comment on it because you're racing on it so why you know you would probably want those streams that you race in to do well because it's going to get more eyes on you when you drive and when the commentators commentate and, and take a night out to commentate your races they get more people to 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 you know spectate them so i think it's a win-win and if everyone does their share um you know we have about 57 i think drivers full-time right now uh, i think there's like one open in each class you know if everyone did it we would have that many likes per per stream right so i think obviously not everyone will do it every race every every stream every week every race you know all, all that but uh, it's just something to keep in mind uh, because it's something that I'm going to be pushing a lot this season. And I'm not uh, disappointed by any of the numbers by any means. Um, I think it's just I know how strong we could be in TCR when we're, we're all a community together. Um, so I'm just trying to emphasize that community and try to really get everything out of you guys because we're close on to 600. And like I said, if the streams do well... Um, it, it does well for everybody so it allows us to do more things um, you know down the down the road um, you know in TCR and it opens doors for things so just keep that in mind all your support is appreciated um, so if you didn't like the video by now <laughs> after my rant please go do it and um, yeah continue to do that uh, throughout the season so yeah I, I agree <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. 
you know, I, I'll be I'll be uh, pushing it a lot this week, uh, this season. Uh, last season, I really, you know what? I, and here's the last thing on that. Usually for me, when I watch a YouTube video or something, because I watch only YouTube for the most part, I hate when people start the video out. You know, you, you watch a, a simple how-to video or just a video that you, an entertainment series or whatever. And the first five minutes, they're on and on about updates. They're on and on about give you a like. They're on and on about this, Thank that, you. the other introduction. Thank you. It's like, why can't you just go to the chase? I clicked on the video, now you're talking all this shit. Just go to the video. Just yeah, Don't talk about what you're going to do in the video. Just do it. People it's, clicked it's on it because of the title. How to um, use a stapler from Walmart. Okay, in this video, we're going to... No, just, just, just do it. They need their money, man. They got to get to their certain time limit, you know? It's just like a TV show. Like, they oh, need man. to get to their certain time frame, so they're going to, you know, get as much time in as they can. Uh, that, that annoys me the most, and I, whenever that happens on YouTube, I just click off. And usually, I hate when people tell me to like the video, because I'll do the opposite. Because people don't like to do things people are told and I understand that so last season and usually all all previous seasons I really don't ask much you know sometimes once or twice a stream I'll, I'll ask uh, for a like or something but you know some streamers too I you know you click on and every two minutes they're like oh everyone just drop a like right now everyone just and I, I get they're do, they're promoting their product and that's what that's all we're doing here but um, it could get a little excessive <laughs> Um, so I, I, I hate trying to ask for likes and all that, but, um, at the end of the day, you know, it does help everyone out, and, you know, we, we don't get money from the YouTube videos, but I think it's just, it, it's cool to get more of eyes on the product, and, um, you know, to try and get to a point where we could get in a better situation in the future, and... I think uh, if it benefits everyone, you know, that should be a good thing, especially if this is our community, so I just, you know, I don't want to ask too much, but yeah, I will be a little bit more this season, just just to uh, push the algorithm. <laughs> Alright. Um, so yeah, let's go to Platinum, uh, the best for last, I guess you can say. <laughs> Uh, yep. Obviously, you commentated it. I uh, I spectated it um, as I wasn't. I'm not racing this season. And uh, to be honest, um, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I did not miss it one bit. <laughs> it was cool seeing everyone else on the grid giving it their all, practicing and um, competing out there. Um, but I was content with um, watching a nice competitive league race in uh, Platinum Class, which is our top division. And uh, I was imp pretty impressed, but but nothing really surprised me, um, mainly because um, you know Platinum Class is m more competitive more competitive drivers you know the gap from first to last is smaller so that means you're gonna have more drivers on the same part of the track so you're gonna have more incidents just because you have more drivers it's like you go into the like Black Friday going on to going into the mall for that big discount on the TV you get a hundred people into this small little two wide door somebody's getting trampled I'm sorry that's how yep. platinum class is they're all yeah. looking for the deals. Silver Class, it's like a soft launch. It's like, all right, you can come in, pre-order it. You know, you, you get here Friday. You could come Saturday, Sunday. We have the line. You know, you got the ribbon out. You know, they have the nice line. You maybe go, you make an appointment. Oh, I'm here to pick up my uh, iPhone 13 5, 5X Max G, uh, whatever phone that I need a mortgage on. <laughs> 15 Gs. I'm here to uh, pick that up. My name is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so little blah, blah, blah goes, picks it up. He has an appointment. It's all set. Oh, nice to see you. You know, you can pay that off. You have five years. You know, all you had to do was sacrifice a car mortgage and, you know, put a copay and everything. So uh, that's quite the analogy there. Well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I hope. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Platinum class, they 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 they're, they're for they see a discount. They're like, oh, 
man, I need that, I need that discount on Black Friday, like 50% off, you know, and, and high, if they don't high def get it, revolu resolution, 4K, <laughs> and if they don't get it, they go bitch at the store manager, and, you know, they put on their Karen wig, and they're like, I want to speak to the manager about I guess this, I'm this is right. Yeah, you know why? You are. <laughs> they, even when I'm not at the race, Camden, even when I'm not at the race, I thought last week I was like, I didn't even think I'd be getting out of that after the race. You didn't even do anything. I didn't even do anything. I was, uh, <laughs> you weren't there. I, I was just a retired goat sitting on the couch watching my platinum class uh, drivers uh, compete with a cup of coffee. And I was just relaxing, day off, didn't have to practice, didn't have to do anything, watching a nice commentary on a Thursday night. And I, I thought nothing of it thinking that I would get added after uh, the race um, because uh, people have bad internet and, and get disconnected and they want to restart and like I said earlier we're not gonna restart for one driver especially when it's the same person every single week I'm sorry it, it, it needs to be a major disconnect um, and, it, and also it's not cross-play either if you disconnect I'm sorry it's not um, you know you have to check your own internet and out and um, those with good internet stay in the lobby those without they get kicked so um, yeah we're not gonna restart uh, a lobby uh, for one person um, or two it's gotta be a pretty major um, disconnect for things to go and that's been in the rules so um, those are the people who didn't get the 50% off plasma HD 4k uh, built-in <laughs> sound system TVs for 50% off they got stuck at full price so um, they they were the ones on the floor with the door trampled on them. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it, it just is you know so um, that's just what happened <laughs> Mm -hmm. That might see. For, you've had some great analogies and comparisons. That right there is at the top. I think. Right. I think you eclipse the oatmeal. I think you eclipse. You know, all the other analogies you made. That one was great, right there. Thank you. I, I try my best. I'm mm -hmm. sure uh, Captain Blade won't, uh, or Saucy Demon uh, won't uh, think the same. <laughs> He's probably not even listening. He ain't even going to hear this. Um, Drop a comment, Saucy Demon, if you are listening, <laughs> and uh, give us your opinions on this. And like the video, too. Yeah, while you're at it, I might as well. <laughs> um, there was also another problem. Forzan had an issue. Um, I don't know, but he was able to race. I think he got disconnected in qualifying, and then he wanted to restart the lobby. That's not how we do things, I'm sorry. You got disconnected in qualifying. You, you get an invite from your teammate or somebody else that's why I tell everybody to add everybody on EA add everybody on PlayStation or PC this way if you disconnect you can at somebody call somebody or at least your teammate and you should be able to get an invite um, I guess the problem there was that Saucy Demon is Forzan's teammate so Saucy Demon might have disconnected and then Forzan also disconnected so they both couldn't get in the lobby um, so uh, I don't know. I know AlphaTauri was changing names. Uh, they might change it a year early. I don't know if they want to change it to uh, an internet service or something because uh, I think the AlphaTauri drivers need one. Uh, either for, I don't know. I know Verizon's pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, Xfinity. Hey, you know in the NASCAR <laughs> Xfinity series how they have like all the drivers at gunpoint and they have to say, "Oh, my car was as fast as Xfinity 5G." Yep. Well, they could enter Formula One, and it can be the same thing. Oh, my my car was as fast as my internet today, you know? That would be perfect for TCR, right? Because, you know, league racing, you have to have good internet. We should do that. We should we should get an Xfinity sponsorship, Seafreeze. Can you imagine? Hey, the, the, that would be perfect. I mean, I would, I would like one. Xfinity, where you at? Maybe I you could Xfinity. sponsor... It's, it's uh, not bad. You could sponsor TCR, and uh, maybe we'll help Forzan and, and Saucy Demon out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I will say, um, 
commentators can always help out too. Um, yeah. I I didn't have Saucy Demon on my list, so I couldn't I couldn't get him in. But especially um, co-commentators. I mean, if if the co is easier, you know, obviously because it wouldn't obstruct the stream. But if that's not the case, yeah, absolutely. If if you're friends with them, and I think that's something I was trying to do. Silver someone, I think it was Pilot. Uh, disconnected I try to send him one but I didn't see him on my list but that's why I say for everybody um, because you know at the end of the day you disconnects are a thing they're always gonna be a thing there it will always happen um, regardless of even if everything's right you know sometimes it go it goes wrong but that's why I, I tell everybody to add as many people as possible who's on the grid because if you have more people added and the commentators and everybody you maximize your opportunity to get back into the lobby in case an issue happens so um, it's really more common sense than anything is to just make sure you have everybody added this way you get disconnected um, most drivers if someone sees someone disconnect they'll even try and send somebody an invite back into the session if especially if it's in qualifying um, in the race, you're probably more likely to get one from the commentator or your own teammate who can pause and would probably pause for you. Um, so, I know we're t talking a lot of jokes and everything, but on a serious note, you know, there are ways to kind of work and get those things figured out. Because we don't want people disconnecting, um, but we also can't restart uh, for one or two people uh, when it's solely on them, on their, their connection. So... Um, so yeah, um, with but besides uh, me getting at it after post race uh, uh, for Xfinity issues, um, <laughs> I thought the race was not surprising. I thought everything was the only thing surprising, and I was really encouraged by it, was actually Forzan's pace. So he started last, and he had like great pace he was up there um making moves and he was in contention for the win um and had great speed uh and he, he's somebody that could do that every single week i'm not surprised by that um he just hasn't strung a few races together to where he can get some top five some podiums um for him it's more of a a win, a podium, or bust. You know, it's very inconsistent, um, and that's something that you know he would have to work on because obviously he was in a nice position running P1 or two with the safety car, and then he had an issue under safety car and spun, and then he still had an opportunity to get some nice solid points, and then. I think he had another issue. I'm reading here. He finished seventh. Forzan, yes. Yeah, so he got six points. But well, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did, right? Based on the results. Um, yeah. I don't remember him getting points though. But let me go he, back and look at the stream real quick. That's what I'm asking because I know I yeah. got points, but I thought he didn't get any. Unless people had uh, maybe penalties. Maybe that's what happened. Um, let me just tell yes. You. Yep, he finished P7. He was going to finish outside of the points if it weren't for penalties. Gotcha. Yeah, but um, overall, the top six, seven, eight drivers at the beginning of the race, they, you know, how close were they all, all throughout, right? I mean, they were uh, within DRS, sometimes so close they were hitting each other. Um, and uh, all throughout the race, you had that, and uh, up until the pit stop, really, that's when things started to change, because we had a nice undercut as well from Forzan. Like, Forzan, he had a great opening round, he just didn't have the result to, to, to back it up. Uh, he undercut it, and the undercut at Qatar was huge, especially when you're in a train like that. He undercut it, I think he was sitting like 7th or 6th, 7th, 8th in that train. He pitted, and he was effectively P2nd, with, and then uh, Silent was in front of him, and they were battling for a little bit. But he undercut the entire train uh, in one lap. So, yep. great from him, and I think the pit stop...
you're going to see that every every race from Platinum. The only time you're going to have somebody run away with a lead or only have a few people in a train is if some people can't make it or some people qualify out of position. Um, apart from that, if you have enough main contenders qualifying roughly at, towards the front, every week you're going to have you know trains like that on all tracks and you're going to have multiple people uh, competing. You, you, you're really not going to have a runaway uh, like I said unless you have those other circumstances um, and I think it's going to be those pit stops where those uh, errors start to happen you know you saw some people pick up some penalties uh, the confessor got a penalty I believe Bats got one late I think it was him did he get one late he did yes yeah. and um, um yeah, so you had some penalties there. You had, uh, so I think Meb, he still finished third, but um, I think he had a moment or something that kind of, he lost the position to somebody. I think he lost it to Bats or, or something, but um, I'm not quite sure, but he still had a great first round to finish third. Uh, I like him in the Ferrari. He looks good in the Ferrari. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Um, with the safety car... And, and the big th result that happened with Platinum was Forzan spinning. And that's what ultimately, I think, won B-Tom the first race. And his first win in, like I think you said, about a dozen races. Because um, he hasn't won in quite a while. So the reason why it helped him so much was because he was sitting P3 for the longest time. Forzan and Silent were really changing position because the leader obviously doesn't have that DRS effect but when you're third in line you really can't gain as much on the straight or maybe he wasn't using battery enough but you know you'd rather finish you'd rather be starting the safety car in second than third you know you want to be that person benefiting the most uh, and when Forzan spun it allowed B Tom to be in second Silent was the one that was defending and B Tom just did what he, you know, and he he's going to win that race nine times out of ten in that position uh, because he was the one with the DRS advantage, and he just saved his battery and he dumped it when he needed it to. And uh, once he got passed on, I think the penultimate lap, the last lap, he just used all the battery and it was a, it was a done deal. So um, I think if Forzan did not spin. It could have been a different outcome just based off of that because it's so close between these drivers that you need every advantage. So Forzan having that mistake added so much percentage to the win for Btom because he moved from P3 to P2 in the train, which is huge in league racing. And especially when those three drivers were identical on lap times and setup. So that really helped his race and... Um, yeah, the uh, defending champion, or the, I guess, current champion, the four-time champion, um, starts off the season with the win. He does. Uh, it was, um, yeah, I mean, it, like you said, just a crazy race. And um, <laughs> I thought going into the season that there's no way that we could have had as many last lap battles as we did in season 15. We already have one this season after round one we had a last lap pass for the win so and with this schedule and this game it's going to be crazier than season 15 c freeze i'm just telling you with this grid and like you said how many people are going to be competing at the front and how many tracks on the schedule that are fast and rely on drs and overtake uh, this platinum grid i think is going to be more competitive than we thought for the championship yeah, I think I think you're right. I mean, you know what? I think Silent is going to be a, a bigger factor in this season than I thought. Um, I agree. I think out of the Red Bull drivers of um, Professional and uh, Silent, I think Silent um, he kind of had a he was in the conversation all of last season up until Canada, and I know he says that I didn't give him an invite back, but he. <laughs> 
I, I didn't see him disconnect at all, to be honest with you, in that race. And he wasn't able to even start the race. So uh, if that didn't happen, let's say he wins that race, he was still in contention or a lot closer because uh, he did finish P3 last season. So I think he's going to have a really good season and he's always been competing towards the end of these races a lot of the time. So um, he's going to be one to watch. This week, the confessor is not going to be here. He's just declined. He said he couldn't race. Uh, and after a poor opening round for his standards, finishing sixth, only eight points, that penalty really hurt him there. But pace-wise, he was, uh, you know, obviously up at the front, um, missing one race. He's going to be a little behind starting this season. But um, I have no doubt that, you know, he'll grab some wins uh, when he is able to race. And uh, hopefully he'll able be able to, you know, do a lot more races once he returns in round three uh, and hopefully he doesn't miss much more um, so yeah the top drivers are gonna do their thing uh, professional I thought had an off week for other circumstances but with those circumstances in place on his personal side I thought he saw he had a solid finish for fourth so I think he'll take that absolutely um, but uh, yeah. for him, it's a little surprising for me. He's last season he used TV Pod, and for part of the season he used No Line, and then towards the end I convinced him to turn it back on, or I told him I don't know if he actually did turn it back on. Um, but now he's back in cockpit No Racing Line, so I don't know what level of commit we're gonna we're gonna see from Professional because I know when he's motivated and practiced and prepared racing line or not cockpit tv pot or not he's going to be up at the front but it, it, this little change i don't know I, th I think it could impact it a little bit um but we'll see we'll see what level of commitment we're going to get from him and we'll see um you know we'll see what he gets at bahrain um which is usually pretty good there um yeah, let me pull up. I wanted to talk a little bit about the other drivers. Um, oh, and professional, he had that incident with uh, Jippo, who uh, replaced me and Aston Martin. Uh, I think he's getting a penalty. If not, I don't know if the decisions are out. No, not yet. So I don't know what that'll be. Um, but most likely he'll be getting a penalty of some sort. Um, we had debut driver um, Meow Slayer, who is now full time in the the Haas. I kept saying Alpine, but it, it's the Haas. <laughs> He's alongside Just Jose, who he had a name change for those who are unaware. His new um, name is Ravioli. Or Rama, Rana, Rana Mavoli, uh, Ravioli Lasagna. I could uh, not say that name <laughs> on Thursday. I just called him Rana. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't. I, that, I don't know if that's maybe his last name or a, a name that maybe it is his name. I, I'm not too sure. Um, but can we like have a rule to to stop changing names? Like I just don't like. I've always gone by Seafreeze, right? Now, I've changed my username a few times, either to have, you know, Seafreeze22. I changed the initial, you know, from lowercase f to capital F, so it's CF, you know, when you see that, like, a little bit more. Then I changed it with TCR in front of it. Apart from that, it's always, you, you can know who I am, because it's always Seafreeze in the name. Then you have people who just change it, like D'Angelo. D'Angelo always used to be D'Angelo, or his other username, which is a little uh, <laughs> silly. Um, I'm not going to say it, but um, now he has it as TCR underscore Antius, and I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're just changing your whole identity. That's, well, that that's a problem nowadays. You know what I mean? I mean, that's a problem with the usernames, the identity, and everything. I mean, we don't know who's I, who. I have two suggestions. Okay, the first one could be 
we should put in a rule to where if we cannot pronounce your name, then you have to change it to something else. Because there's a lot of them in platinum to where we can't pronounce them. The second option is, you could just be boring like me and just use my actual name. That way you don't have the temptation to go and, you know, be creative and, and change up the username every six months. Oh, man. I, I will say, most username changes, the ones that they turn it to, end up being poor decisions. It's like a tattoo, almost. It's like... You always regret it, and you always turn it back. Always. I have never had a tattoo, and I don't have any desire to get one. Yeah. You should get with a tattoo. A tattoo. What should my tattoo be? You should have one that says "Sea Freeze is the best." Mm. Was. Was yeah. If it's gonna be anything, it's gonna will be, be was because <laughs> you're you're a pastime now. Yep, I am a pastime, and you know what? I have, I'm totally okay with that. As yeah. long as I don't get added next week, I think it'll be it'll work out good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Washed up. Yeah. Well, well, well. <laughs> At least I could sit with some. Uh, some trophies of mine, and uh, yeah, we're, we're not we're not going to talk about who beat who in the TCR go karting tournament a few weeks ago, right? That was unofficial. Yeah, you know that's that's an unofficial right. One. That was uh, just unofficial, practice. even though it's on printed paper. It you is know, printed paper. We you we right. have the results. But, that was you know. preseason testing. That's that's all that was. Right. Okay. Gotcha. I'm testing a new aero package. I needed better mm -hmm. gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not garden yeah, gloves. You go and ask for gloves, and they looked at you like, we've never had anybody ask for gloves here. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Next time I'm bringing my own, goddammit. All right. Um, I will I will uh, give these two drivers a little uh, five seconds of fame. Um, I think we're going to have a segment on the, the podcast of like something let, let me think about it i think we're gonna have a segment of uh the biggest you know how they have the biggest loser yeah like the tv program so are you saying we're gonna go on a weight loss competition we're, we're gonna have a weight loss competition is that what you're saying because that's what that show is <laughs> yeah it is a weight loss but uh yeah, yeah but you know you know how like sometimes they'll They'll have, you know, you know, there's some big guy there's some big people on that show, right? So the biggest yeah. loser they they try and lose weight and then they do, but then they leave the show and then they gain it all back because then they go home and they have more cookies. So, so what are this, you suggesting? this is my suggestion. So okay. the biggest losers, those are go in the program and they lose all this weight, they go home and they have a cookie. And you know what? Those people who have a cookie and they get back to their original size are quitters. So this segment is called the biggest losers, biggest quitters, and those go to the Gronk 2017 and Andy Pooh. They're gone. They came in here wanting to lose weight. They maybe lost a little bit, and now they had their cookies, and now they're fat because they left. <laughs> And they're qu they're quitters. <laughs> I think that's a good segment. I don't know. I, that, okay. I, the, how is so, that analogy? <laughs> you just one topped the analogy from before. Okay, this is your best analogy. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. That's uh, that just happened. Yep. You just dropped. Something. You just dropped the mic. Oh, yeah. The weight scale broke, ladies and gentlemen. The weight scale broke. Yep. They have broken the weight <laughs> scale. They got up on the weight scale, and the thing just said, went, quit. It just crushed. It said, you give up. That's what I said. Give up. Um, <laughs> give up. So I'm going to give a little a little less... Um, um, I'm not going to go so heavy on the Gronk, um, because he did come in here. He, You know, we... I just don't understand why he just leaves. I don't understand why anyone would just leave. I mean, 
I, I don't know if it was because he was struggling and off the pace and he finished last. I think he DNF'd, or maybe he got taken out, uh, or maybe he... I don't know what the reason. We didn't get one, so we're just speculating at this point. But if he really felt like Platinum was in his class, we had a seat in Golden. And he, we could have just swapped him and put him in there. If it was too big of a competition, we could have just put him in Golden class. But, you know, to, to sign up, to do the evaluation, to do one race and then just quit, I just don't... It's just, I don't understand that. Um, if it's in the moment or whatever it is, because um, he left right after the race, and he, he just he just leaves, no explanation. It's kind of just disrespectful for everybody, you know, running this thing and those racing, um, because, you know, a lot gets done for the community, and then someone just leaves right off the bat. And that probably wouldn't have happened if we had the entropy, but we don't, so those things are going to happen. But um, if that was the case... He could have obviously just went to Golden, um, but if there was another issue, I, n I don't know, we didn't get to hear it. And um, Andy Pooh left, because... Uh, that is not his username. <laughs> oh, it's not? <laughs> Andy no. Pooh? Oh, wait, is it? Is it? Oh, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> nah, he... Um, he had an alright rate. Right? I mean, he didn't get any points, but... Um, you know him too. I mean, there is a golden seat available. He is a golden champion, um, so it's cool to have him on the grid. You know, he missed some seasons, um, but uh, you know, he left because there was arguments in group chat or whatever. And you know, people get emotional these days, and they see one thing and they think another. Um, and he left. So those are the big. So that's the segment. Biggest win. Uh, biggest losers. Biggest quitters. Uh, we had two cookies to give out this week. One to Andy Pooh and one to the Gronk. I hope this is a one-time occasion hope, yeah. and this won't be a weekly award. We are not encouraging you to try and get this award, okay? <laughs> you don't want to be fat and you don't want to be a quitter. <laughs> so don't try to get this award, okay? If you're listening, this is a one-time thing. Oh, oh man! Did anyone else leave this week, or was that it? Because I don't, I don't think anyone else l left. Um, well, if you were giving out cookies, I might be the next one up. <laughs> uh. Oh man, I, I should say maybe they're expired cookies or something. But um, oh yeah. But I, I know uh, who was it? Uh, Daniel Morris was in Golden. Uh, he didn't know that Golden was with no ABS, so he actually that's why he got moved to Silver. So, um. He just changed grids, but I don't think anyone else um, left for any other reasons. Um, just switch class. Um, yeah, and that's fine. Like, there's, you know, yeah, nothing absolutely. wrong with that, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, no problems there. Um, so, yeah, Meow, Meow Slayer, who uh, got points in his debut, will go into the Haas to fill the Gronk, and that means we have one seat open. Uh, at Williams, so you can still sign up. I think we have one seat open in each class, so um, go sign up. And um, yeah, I don't know anything else from from Platinum. Uh, it, it was it, that's what it, I would say. It's chi uh, chaotic. It's you know endings of the races were chaotic. Close battles. Um, we had a lot of tickets opened up, lots of uh, chatter. Um, hopefully, we can limit some of that this season. Platinum class drivers, please. Oh, you know what? Uh, let me let me go on one more rant, shall we? Okay. Or not, shall we? Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> I'm loving this. Go ahead. <laughs> oh man. Um, so thanks to B Tom, we are now in the process of um, revising a rule in our rule book. Um, usually last season it was Seagrass job to get rules changed and honestly uh, on, on a serious note Seagrass was one who looked at the loopholes <laughs> in the rules and and he honestly he would um, he would I guess go to the full extent of our rule book and he got a lot of rules changed and in place uh, because of him and I, I think I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing I mean that's good for the process because we do go by our rules so we want to clean them up uh, but we had B-Time he won the race and uh, he submitted 
an incident between Forzan and Fire Up Flow. I think Forzan might have hit or uh, Fire Up Flow off track or whatnot. And, um, you know, they talked about it after the race, either in private message or group chat, and, and no one submitted an incident. They were like, oh, it's all right, it's cool, man, you know. This was Fire Up Flow's first r race full-time in Platinum. He was in Golden last season, he wants to be with his teammate, got any weeb there at the Alfa Romeo. So, this is his first full-time ride in Platinum. It's good to see him up there. Um, and I think if he didn't have that contact, he, he could have finished in the points. I thought he had a decent race. Um... But uh, at the end of the day, Forzan and Fireflow didn't want to proceed with putting an incident ticket in. And that is absolutely fine. Um, if Forzan was at fault and Fireflow doesn't want to submit, Forzan doesn't want to submit, obviously, because uh, then he would have got a penalty, then there's no reason to submit. And, you know, at the end of the day, we encourage that. We encourage drivers to d discuss, to open dialogue with each other, have respect towards each other, gain that respect on the grid. And you know what? When they do it like that, Forzan, or Fireflow gave a little bit to Forzan. Now, let's say Fireflow hits Forzan a few weeks in advance, let's say a couple rounds in. Maybe Forzan will say, you know what? You didn't submit me back then. I'm not going to submit you this week. And that's how the respect is put on the grid. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, it saves the volunteer steward some time. And it saves the driver some time. Gives respect back on the grid. The driving standards change a little bit. And I think all in all that's good. Um, but Beton won the race. And now he's submitting a ticket. Because he saw Forzan hit Fireflow. Which he thinks deserves a penalty. So he's submitting a penalty. Uh, a ticket to try and get him a penalty. Or just to submit him. But that I don't know. That, it's kind of an unwritten rule until now. We're now writing a rule um, because in league racing, that's never what you would do. Um, I mean, in all my hundred plus league races, especially in TCR and other leagues, that you would never submit somebody else for someone else's incident. The only time you would do that is if you had something like they were abusing something, so more individual things. Um, if they were, let's say, reset the track when they weren't supposed to, because obviously no one could submit you because it only happened to you. Uh, so it's okay to submit somebody else if they're intentionally crashing out, causing a safety car, if they're resetting a track when they're not supposed to, when they're cutting the pit entrance, or, you know, violating track limits, or, um, you know, something like where it's more individual based. Obviously, no one can submit them because it only happened to them. So that is a time where you can submit somebody else because they're violating a rule and the grid kind of holds each other accountable. But when you have an incident between two drivers or more and you're not involved in any way, shape, or form, you really should just keep keep your own business. In my, in my opinion, you shouldn't really be involved in the incident um if they don't want to go if they don't want to press charges they don't want to press charges <laughs> um and and that's kind of how i see things yeah in a perfect world they might you know in f1 everything gets submitted right any incident gets submitted everybody's hold accountable for any incident that happens they all get penalty points and that you let the due process work but at the end of the day we're gonna miss incidents because not everyone will submit incidents and we don't want everybody to submit every single thing that you know somebody submits so i think at that regard the ticket was um denied by uh, the head steward which rightfully so is in the rules and um you know both parties didn't want to go forward and and we're going to make a little tweak to uh f you know formally have that moving forward um as you know, that's kind of how we saw last week, uh, last season with the appeals. People were appealing other people's appeal uh, decisions, trying to get the stewards' decision reversed. When they had zero um, impact, they weren't involved at all. So then, now if you're if you're gonna s open the floor up for drivers appealing uh, appealing different people's incidents to try and get it overturned, or if you're having people submit any ticket. It's just going to get too much. It's going to be political games. It's going to be who's in it for me. 
no. Uh, we're not going down that rabbit hole. So, um, I, uh, took some time. I, uh, had my law book out, and I was, uh, <laughs> helping Tico and Silent with some rules and uh, they are currently in due process trying to get voted on so we'll see if it gets passed uh, through the legislative branch or whatever however that works um, and gets into the rule book so thanks be Tom uh, for updating our rules for us yeah very helpful and yeah I mean I agree you know, you can't go and appeal somebody's conviction that isn't your conviction. You know, if you're not involved in it, you can't go and do that. So, it, it makes sense. And just in general, um, I think when it comes to appealing, or not appealing, um, you know, going after somebody, trying to put in a ticket, um, you should really only do it if it truly affects your race, and if it's something that could happen in the future because part of the reason to submit a ticket is to penalize somebody and to kind of encourage them to not repeat the same actions the following race so say that somebody got into you on lap one and you go into a half spin and you end up finishing in a pretty respectable spot late in the race there's probably no reason to go and submit a ticket you can probably reach out to the person and be like hey you know this happened early on in the race and you can have a talk about it but um yeah we shouldn't be putting in tickets for everything you know i, I put in a couple of tickets early on in the silver class season uh, last season but those were scenarios where it was late in the race and the actions were kind of egregious so it it was warranted but um yeah i do notice that we have as a league gotten into a habit of just submitting everybody and everything and it's just unnecessary you know especially if it really doesn't affect the outcome of a race just just talk it out you know go into either a private message or find some way to resolve the conflict and just move on yeah i absolutely agree with that i mean i know why they do it they submit everything because that's just how it is nowadays in league racing you pretty much submit everything and you put it into the hands of the stewards uh and if that helps you or benefits you in any way you're going to take advantage of that but at the end of the day you know that's not what we normally want um because you know you don't want more incidents into the hands of the stewards where it could go either way and then they make a call and people get upset it's like and it just goes into a spiral like we we want that to be the last resort you know you you should talk it out get respect from each other and only go through the process if you absolutely think someone should be reported for something and they do deserve a penalty um, obviously you could support uh, submit anything um, it's only up to the you know stewards if they actually want to review it or not if it's a if it's a, a healthy report um, a healthy submission if there's something there to actually look at but you could always submit everything and um, but I also say give it a day you know you you, you finish the race don't submit right away like sleep on it come back the next day because you do get 24 hours think about it and um, maybe talk to the drivers involved and um, you know maybe come to a conclusion the next day is, is my opinion um, on that matter but um, yeah this was a fun one Camden I like this this was a good episode I felt like hopefully everyone enjoyed all my <laughs> analogies and then the first round TCR is back baby TCR is back and we go to round two Bahrain this week so tune in show support and um yeah yeah uh, it, this was a lot of fun honestly maybe our best episode I don't know, we've had a couple of spicy ones in the past, but this is probably up there. So make sure to give this a like, as we always say. Give this a like, and uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to hear more of us talking and ranting and uh, just talking about TCR. 
Yeah. Well, this was a hot sugar spice and everything nice episode. <laughs> That's Brought right. to you by Xfinity. <laughs> 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 All yes. right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Make sure to follow t on all socials and join the t Discord server where we are the most active. And until next week, thank you for listening. <laughs>